House to Home, presented by Remax Diamond Realty. Afadeh, and welcome back to the show, and welcome to House to Home, everybody, where last week's rapid-fire exchange between myself and Liz and Gina from Remax Diamond Realty uh, dealt with the fact of public hearings and a particular piece of proposed legislation that obviously they feel very, very strongly about from their standpoint as professional realtors. Ladies, Afadeh, welcome back. Thanks for having us again. Okay, uh, okay. Uh, Gina, have, have you have you cooled in any way um, in your opinions about this this legislation or why it's so important that people attend the public hearing and make their um, their voices heard on it one way or the other? No, I still think it's 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 really important that our families out there that are concerned about this bill. I really feel it's it's extremely important they participate. In fact. They've rescheduled the meeting for tomorrow at 5 p.m. And anyone who's interested um, needs to call Senator St. Augustine's office. Now, I know we had a little bit of an issue last week with participation. Um, I know his office put some of us, I mean, there were about 40 people who logged on to participate and a lot of us were, were put in a waiting room. I didn't even know such a thing existed, but basically, we, I was sitting here staring at a blank screen until I called in to say, hey, was the meeting postponed and found out that there was a waiting room. But I think Senator St. Augustine's office wrote a letter and explained that, but perhaps that was just a mistake. I think in their endeavor to run the meeting smoothly, they might, might have gotten some parts of it. It was done incorrectly, but I think they're uh, committed to running a smooth meeting. What, what I'm curious about is why do these public hearings for this particular bill keep continuing when the, I know the government officials are saying that this is a great thing. Um, I, I think there's two parts to this bill. That is the concern regarding the aquifer, which is a legitimate concern. And it's a concern that should be looked at carefully solutions need to come up to be, you know, solutions need to be looked at and addressed. And I think you need to find the right group of individuals who can put their heads together and work on this problem, which is probably going to inv involve weary GWA for sure. And perhaps some engineers that also have a good, you know, good information regarding the aquifer and, and how we can best protect it. So that is one part of the bill. The part of the bill that Liz and I are particularly concerned about is that it goes from that to, and the way to cure it, the way to solve it is to remove parental subdivision rights. That's the part of the bill that we're, we're contesting and we're saying no. Um, and, and, we, and we go to the WEARY report and in the WEARY report, it says, we cannot clearly identify and we need to do more studies in order to determine if sewer, uh, sewage leakage from the sewer lines and septic tanks um, are, the corporates, uh, are the culprits to this uh, aquifer issue. Mm -hmm. um, and so because it clearly states that, it is not definitive. It does not say this is the reason and we need to get, eliminate parental subdivision. So that, that's, I think, our biggest concern is how do you jump from one to that. And so we're going to continue protesting that eliminating parental subdivision rights is not the right solution for this problem. Mm -hmm. And the other thing is, um, Jason, why, why shotgun this through? I mean, it's obvious there's no correlation between the septic tanks leaching and creating uh, the high nitrate contact or the increase in the nitrate uh, contract, uh, content in the wells. So why shotgun this, uh, why the shotgun approach? Mm -hmm. Where, where, I mean, there are other uh, critical issues that are facing our island. And why has this become the focal point? This, this is um, a different approach. And in fact, I mean, I've talked to people who have sent an email with their testimony and wanting to testify they never got the link. So uh, that was why we wanted to focus on this show 
to get people to send your letters in to Senator St. Augustine's office, send your testimony, request to appear at the Zoom. They need to know that the island, the people of Guam are not um, in favor of this because it does impact the individual families. So it's, it's, it's a bigger problem. And what is it, the knee jerk? You think this is a problem, therefore mm -hmm. we're gonna fix it. But there are unintended consequences that will affect uh, our island. Well, if so, there is any sense of, sense of urgency around this, I would assume, and maybe maybe blindly on my part, that because this is the last session of this particular legislature and the author of this bill, Senator Regine Biscoe Lee, will not be returning um, for another, another term, it's basically this. Right. I mean, yeah. So, so, just, so that, that being the case, I mean, yeah, if, the, if, there, if it's going to get passed, it's going to get passed in the next couple of weeks before uh, before the inauguration of the new legislature. But if if this fails to pass, right, and they say, like some other senator picks it up in the next legislature and says, okay, well, I still think it's worth considering, and it winds up being rebuilt from the ground up, um, would either of you have any sort of input as to, you know, like how, how something like this should be developed and maybe more amenable to realtors and to sellers? Well, there, Buyers forget sellers, the realtors. This is not about realtors. This is not a realtor issue. This is a people of Guam issue. Okay. So it's yeah. not about us. And again, I mentioned the last time, I'm a product of parental subdivision. So it, it's not about that. It's about the people. We don't, it, they need to cross that off. It's not about realtors, please. It's it's about, and, and yes, there are solutions. But here's my, my feedback on that you can say, okay, we have alternative uh, methods to you rather than the septic tanks. And yes, you can, there's again, one individual who brought in a system and it's taken nine years. So if you're going to come up with solutions that yes, this is possible to have alternative methods, but then who's going to approve it? It has to be financially, um, we have to be financially able to, to finance this particular product. Mm -hmm. uh, it can't be, it has to be cost effective in other words. So if, if a family can't afford it, don't introduce something too costly, but then the approval process from Guam EPA is critical. So if Guam EPA takes nine years or Weary takes nine years to approve it, what's the point? You know, you're, you're, you're pushing us back into the box again. You know, we, you want to contain us you don't want us to do this, but then you're you're tying both our hands behind our backs. So yes, they, they really have to take their time to look at the unintended consequence of this bill, because you can say we will approve ABCD, but if the government won't approve that, or the government cannot bring in um, sewer lines, what's the point? Mm -hmm. You know, you're, it just complicates things even more. Okay, well, Jean, so, I'd like to- Oh, We're please, asking please, please. you to take your time, do the, the studies that are needed, identify where the sources are, because yes, water for Guam is critical. We want clean water, but at the same time, let's do this properly. Find out what is the true nature of the intrusion of nitrates into our water, and it may not be the septic tanks. Okay, well, Gina, uh, we started with you. I'd like to give you the final word as we wrap up here. Um, for people that may be either on the fence and saying, I don't know if I should, you know, I've, I've never given public testimony or I don't know if this one, you know, deserves my time. We're in the middle of Christmas. We're in the middle of a pandemic. You know, I'll let somebody else handle this. Or they think it's it's way too esoteric and there's too many things with the science and the engineering or the um, the property regulations and everything. If you could just simplify this and give us the fundamental problem that needs to be addressed and why people need to come out. Let's end with that. So what, what is the core problem? The core problem is this bill, the way it's written, will not do anything to resolve aquifer issues. The only thing it does is eliminate parental subdivision rights, period. I cannot imagine that when this bill passes and I can no longer subdivide my property into a parental subdivision so I could give it to my children so I can get more property, you know, so I could take my loaf of bread and cut it up into four pieces on a acre lot, that that is going to cure this issue with aquifer. It is not. I wanna see the evidence that shows 
that if you eliminate parental subdivision rights, that this will fix the aquifer issue. It will not. So if it doesn't do that, then why take that away from families who all they're really trying to do is make sure that their, that their lot can be divided into more than less. I, I just don't understand. And, and you know, I, I agree with Liz. With everything going on right now, I am pleading to the senators because, you know, I, I'm noticing we've had public, this will be the third public hearing on this bill. And it somehow just keeps advancing, even though the public that is putting in their two cents are all saying, hey, wait, we don't agree with this. Mm -hmm. The government officials are saying, yeah, we think this is great. But if the public hearing is designed to listen to what the public has to say about this bill, then why does it keep moving forward when everyone that has testified as a public member is saying we disagree with it? So what is going on? What is the urgency? Why does it need to be done this way as Liz asked? Why can't the, the people of the legislature, le legislature pause and say, okay, guys, this, this really is important. Both issues are important. Parental subdivision rights are important. Aquifer is important. Let's really take a look at this. Let's get more experts involved. And when I say experts, I don't mean testimony from the senators. Yes, EPA, yes, people from Weary and GWA and perhaps other professionals in the field because Weary has said, this is not an exact science. We have to continue our investigation. So for me, that right there is a pause button. Let's pause. And I'm just asking if this does come up for a vote, I'm asking people at the legislature, put Remember. a pause on this, please. Okay, well, let's pause right now with this show so we can give people time to make sure that they head out to the public hearing, which is Wednesday, December the 9th at 5 p.m. This is Senator Joseph Augustine's it's committee. You can participate in Zoom. A, go in the comments here, and you can see how you can uh, participate in that. So, ladies, uh, thank you very much, and good luck to you. I know you, you feel very, very strongly about this, obviously, so uh, we wish you the best, and we'll catch up next week and see how it goes. Thank you. All right, and and, and uh, Gina, thank you for keeping this uh, like relatively <laughs> calm. I, I was going to say like, hey, watch your uh, blood pressure now. <laughs> Always cool, Jason. Always hey. cool. We're cool. I like that. Peace <laughs> sign. All right. Bye-bye, <laughs> everybody.